Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name's Samantha. I play Laura Greyvale, a sorcerer from Nefalia. Hello, I'm Colin Robinson and I play Cuin de Greymont, a paladin from Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan and I play Ogvar, a ranger from Kessig. This week we would like to say a big hello to Gareth Howe. became four after acquiring a mildly aggressive and rather angry accoutrement. Orland, their talkative new team member, aired his dirty laundry in public and Ogwar took on the task of launching the lingerie prior to heading in for a lovely luncheon laid on by Esther and Callie. Episode 17. Bad Batitudes. So, you go back inside, I'm taking it. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yep. Orland is a bit chatty, but as soon as you start going towards other people, he does stop chattering goes completely quiet and you go inside and they've brought down a table into the main part of the church and they've set the table and you can hear uh, well you can see Robert and Callie are arguing once again uh, bickering between the pair of them Florent is helping his grandmother bring food from upstairs downstairs and the table's all fully set out for a full lunch Mm. Right, well, I'll take myself a place at the table. Yep. Sit down. Yep, I'll sit down as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you'll have a really nice, nice lunch. It's home cooked food. Esther's cooked this once again. Um, you know, there's all sorts on the table. There's uh, stew, there's thick stew, freshly baked bread, uh, there's puddings, there's all sorts on the table. Well, Laura's. Laura. I assume they're all going to say grace because they are religious people. And Laura no. will no, no, that's a Christian thing. Oh, okay. So they they don't they don't sort of. Oh, okay, fair enough. No, I've never prayed before. <laughs> no, that's true. You haven't. No. Fair enough. I was going to say. Get the I was going to say, Laura would just be respectful and go with go with that. No, there's there's no. Oh, grace. okay. None of that. Right. Okay. Uh, just, handfuls of food. Cool. <laughs> just get it in your face yard. first. <laughs> Okay. okay. Yep. So you have a nice lunch. It takes about an hour for lunch. So you're probably talking it's about one half one now. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do? I'd like to take um, another apple off the table if there's a fruit platter yeah, or something, yeah. and um, I'll drop that into the side pocket of my. Cl- I'll cut it up and I'll cut. I'll drop it into the side pocket of my cloak. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll have a quick look under my cloak to see if. Um, Rowan's just still sulking, still sulking or quiet, or whatever. Still sulking, still knocking back the Zeds. I think. Um, the other thing I will do is I'm going to take the second cloak off because I'm getting a little bit warm now. So okay. I'll leave the cloak on the top and I'll take the cloak underneath up. I'm going to fold it um, as small and tidy as I can, and I'm going to pop it into Orland. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you pop it into Orland. He doesn't say anything. Um, but I'll give him a pat. One of the little, one of his straps kind of curls around your wrist as you do that. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to smile to myself. Okay. Right. Uh, so what happens now we've had our meal? Because we we didn't discuss whether we were going to talk to Esther. Well, I think while everybody's at the table, um, I, I suppose I'll broach the subject very delicately and just say, um, Esther, um, the history of this church. Yes, yes. Um, when we were down in the bottom, uh, there are some in the lower level. That is, there's um, there's a shrine to Avacyn, and then there's some other. Yes, yes, I, I go I go down and dust it every day, set up some incense. Yes, right, yeah. Um, who are the people that are entombed down there? Oh, they're they're my predecessors, my you know my fathers down there, my great grandfather and my grandmother, great grandmother. Uh, it's, you know, my family, the wardens of the church, tend to be put on the lowest level. Did they hold a particular place in 
Um, not particularly, no. We were just the wardens of this church and, you know, Florent is taking over from me now and she, she kind of giggles and pats him on the cheek slightly. And it's, it's obviously a really old place. If it's been there for that many generations, this has stood for a long time. Oh, so yes, yes. W- what about, are there any legends to this place? Are there any, where, where does this go back to in history? Uh, not really, no. I mean... Obviously, when when this first settlement, this this Junau was first a tiny little hamlet, and over the years it grew and grew, and they started building a church, and then as time wore on, you know, it just grew bigger and bigger, and so the church grew bigger itself to accommodate the people. Are any any legends surrounding uh, the church, or, the, or or in fact Junau? No, uh, not not that I know of. And you can roll a, a sense motive. That's probably not going to go well. <laughs> And you can all roll sense motive if you want. That'll be a 13 all in. That'll be a 20. Um, I'm far too busy filling the face because I've got a 5. <laughs> okay, yep. You're, you're still just finishing off licking your fingers, I'd imagine. The pair of you, Ogvar, uh, no, Kewin and Elora, you both get the sense that she knows more than she's telling. Kewin even more so. But you don't think, Kieran, you get this kind of insight that it's not something about the church, this building, but it's something else which she's not telling you. You have to get the manacles out again. Oh, God. Do you know Get the manacles out again. <laughs> hey, your tap. So... <laughs> Mannequin... <laughs> Mannequin. <laughs> I don't want to know about your... Manacoli... <laughs> a, 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 a lady is not really... <laughs> Besides, I've got the f- distinct feeling that she's probably the shit out of all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. <laughs> Especially with her grandson. Bold of you to assume that Laura's into that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, things you do know what underwear he wears, so. <laughs> Apparently, none because he's left it in the bag. <laughs> Lots of people know what sort of underwear he wears now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, um, so Laura's trying to work out how best to, to, to kind of like ask more questions and be more specific um, um, and it, it, she doesn't know how to approach it quite delicately at the moment she's trying to think of something prudent to ask okay so I can sense that she's not telling us everything she's not telling everything but you don't get the sense it, you don't get the feeling that it's about the building about the church like Laura's asking in that in that sense it's not about this place, you think she knows more, but it's not quite on the same topic that Elora is talking about. So there's nothing really happening, but what about your uh, grandparents and everybody else down there? Is is there a story behind that, or is it just uh, where they're buried? No, oh, oh, no, not really. It, uh, it's always been the way that you know the the, the last couple of generations of wardens of the church out uh, there. They, they, they guard the shrine, so to speak, but then when there's no more room for the next generation, the older generations get moved off into a, a different graveyard. They get relocated, so to say. When you've been down on the bottom floor, have you ever had any strange experiences? I mean, once I got a very nasty shiver up my spine, but no. No, it, it, I haven't really, you know, it's... it's the bottom floor it's you know i go to pay respects to my family i pay respects to the shrine you know it's, it's something i do every day what what why do you ask no i just got a funny feeling when i was down there maybe it's just because it was uh, maybe it's just because it's a uh, you know a, 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 a crypt i don't know is esther uh, do you have a library i mean this place has got so much history. Have you got any history books? Any any history records? Oh, that are kept um, in here? Oh, I'm just oh, interested. All of the books are um, in in that top layer of the catacombs. They're they're, they're on the uh, the bookshelf. I'm sure you saw it on your way through. Yeah, that's that's well, would where you, they are. Would you have an objection if I went and had a quick look? Oh no, of course. I'm no, actually course. really interested in the building. No, no, take your time. Take your time. I'm going to excuse myself from the table, and at this point, I'm going to wander off. Okay. Um, I'm going to go into the top part of the catacombs. Okay. Um, I've taken. Um, what's his name? Orland. 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 I've taken Orland with me. Just put him over my shoulder. And okay. Sit. And I'll go down. And obviously, I find my way back down to the bookcase. Um, 
kind of are there any history books on the building or family family build family book you know like what am I trying to say? Uh, are there any sort of family history books there? Record books? No. Well, let me search check. Oh, well. A whole seven. Okay. With a seven, you're not able to find any books which seem to be pertaining to Esther's family or the wardens of the church. Okay. With that, I will just come back up and rejoin the others. Okay. Yep. So we'll come back up. And... Yeah, so what are you two doing? Well, just uh, filling my face and watching what's going on and contemplating. Uh, I'm just thinking in my head. We know that the three who have just arrived rode through a storm. Now, is that the storm when we were out camping and I saw some hoof prints on the floor that they were in a hurry because there was a group or is it are we on about the storm last night through the nebul gas because they overshot drew now they'll have to go somewhere else ah but that's the question well, well yeah. this is out of character obviously well, let's this see. Is, <laughs> i mean that would be uh we all saw the track uh, we all saw the the horse track so I pointed them out to everybody. Or I pointed them out to everybody. Uh-huh. I, I can ask what. Uh, <clears throat> ask we got. We got. Uh, Flo- Florent. Uh, 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 excuse me, Florent. Uh, if I may be so bold to ask, but. You said you uh, had to overshoot Drunel somewhat and uh, perform another task. Yes, yes. Whereabouts was, uh, did this task take you? Because uh, we may have uh, need to travel further down uh, the coast and uh, we were just wondering if, if you had been that way uh, yes yes um, we, we had to um, there was just a small bit of business we had to take care of for the church on our way down and unfortunately it was past Guna and we had to ride quite hard through a storm a couple of nights back uh, I don't know if you, you caught it you may have been travelling down oh it's just we were um, we were on our way ourselves a few nights ago and we got caught in a, a terrible, terrible storm, ever, ever so uh, ferocious, and um, we, just, we just hunkered down for the night. We, we dared not travel through such a storm. I commend you fully on your valiantness. Yes. Well, we, it, it was hard on the horses. I'll give it that. Um, but no, we had to travel down towards. Uh, we, we followed the wild road a bit, a bit further down, and we went out towards the drunken mire. Okay. It was a. Uh, just a, just a quick bit of business, but yeah, God, the journey. Okay, where is the drunken? So on mire? your map, the drunken mire is there. So if you go, oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Uh, okay, because yeah, we we maybe you've got to get down that way. We, yeah. Yeah, maybe heading down towards Generic's Tower. So that will be the way that we do head out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Um. Well, I'd say we may have need to uh, travel down. That way, not not quite into the, uh, the the drunken mire, but um, it will certainly help if you could tell us what to expect um, in those parts when we do travel through them. Oh uh, yes, of course. I mean, the road, the south. If you take the southern gate and you go down out of Juno across the wild road that way, it is a fairly clear track. You you there's plenty of rest spots. You know, the sort always marked with the collar of Avacyn. They're safe spots for rest in. Um, but we, we didn't really encounter much trouble, but then we were on horseback and we were moving quite fast, so we didn't really stop to take a look around. Um, so I, I don't know if I can really help you with any, what dangers may lie on the path, but there haven't been any rumours of bandits around this area recently, so... Okay, that's... Um... You, uh, if, if you were so inclined, you may find more information about the road and what's on the road if you go to uh, Contract Valor. Contract valor. That's the uh, Lawson local mercenary scheme, right? Yes, yes, yes. We came across those back in Gloomerest, didn't we? Yes, we have. Uh, we have quite a big branch in Juno. Uh, they're they're over by the uh, industrial district, where all the you know the sword shops are and, and all the the armourers. It's over in that direction. It's a more suitable location for those kind of adventurers and whatnot. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you ever so much for that. No, no worries. Just ask, ask away if you need anything. 
Right, well, I, I would imagine that that's... Uh... <laughs> Cute and exploding. Roll me a constitution save. That was a joke, I was joking. So, I guess that's really going to conclude lunch. So, well, I'll just... I'll drop the subject through the rest of lunch because I don't seem to have got any further with it at this moment in time. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the actual relevance is other than my my just curiosity at this stage to try and explain a few things, but, you know. Mm. Um, so I'll just finish up, have a drink, and um, I guess excuse myself and go out to the front of the church. Okay. Oh, well. Stand up as well, and is everybody else finishing, or are the? Yeah, everyone else is pretty much finished. It's just everyone's leaning back, kind of, you know, letting lunch go down. They're not packing away yet, then. Esther's starting to kind of tidy plates away and whatnot. Are we going to ask her if she can join us, or is it too soon? I think what I'll do is wait till everybody. Um, I'm going to stay outside and just monitor. Kind of, can I? Well, I probably can't see the lunch table from the fr- from the front doors, or is it? It's not in the centre of the church, is it? Or is it? It is kind of towards the the st- spiral staircase where it comes down right. from her her tower. Right. Um, can I see that from where I am, just outside the doors, or not really? Yeah, you can you can see you can vaguely see. Right. Well, I'm just going to keep an eye from the doors. I'll stand on the one side of the doors where I can get a better view and just wait for everybody to sort of saunter off and clear off in different directions. So I just appear like I'm getting some fresh air outside. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of time goes past, not too much, but Florence helping Esther kind of tidy the table away and pack the table away and you know clear off food and whatnot, and. Um, Callie and Robert, they're heading back down towards the catacombs. They've gone through the doors, they're going to carry on clearing up and whatnot. Uh, their bickering is usually just rah! from Robert and just some kind of berating tones from Callie. I'm going to go back into the church at this point. I'm then going to go over to the table where they're clearing away the rest of the stuff. And I'm going to say to Florent, um, Laura's going to say, Well, it's okay, Florent. You go and do what you've got to do. Um, You've had a long journey here. We've been here, you know, at least we've had a night's sleep. So let me take over and do that. He gives you a look and he, he gives he just nods slowly and he goes, yes, I'll, I'll leave that to you then. I'd better go check on Robert and Callie. Yeah. And he turns to us and he goes, I, I shall leave, um, I, shall, I shall just pop down and see how they're doing, Grandmother. Don't have too much fun without me. And off he goes. No, I'm going to follow her into the kitchens carrying some stuff or take stuff up. It goes Are up to her kitchen, doesn't it? There as well. Well, yeah, well, I mean, I'm helping tidy up as well. Yeah, you have yeah, a tidy yeah, up, yeah. 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 Okay. And follow her upstairs because she, she takes everything back upstairs. Yeah, she takes it back she? up to her kitchen. Right, so I'm going to follow her upstairs and go into a kitchen because um, I've not been in the kitchen before, um, the others have. Um, and I'm just going to start taking some stuff up for her into the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say to her. Uh, so what are you planning to do now that Florence back? She pauses where she's kind of scrubbing some plates in, in the washing up bowl. She goes, well, honestly, I'm I'm not really quite sure. I, I don't really know, to be honest, now that you ask. Do you want to stay here or would you? I mean, it, it has always been my dream to travel the world and have exciting adventures. But, you know, I, I couldn't leave Florence on his own. Well, he's not really on his own, though, is he? Oh, well, he's, he, got, he's got Kelly and... He, he is grown now, I suppose, but... Well, would you, you know, uh... Would you like to, uh... Come with us, maybe? You see how it, uh... We're on this quest for the church. Um, uh, and we know how... How... Very able and calming... Uh, I find you very calming. Um, and your knowledge is far superior to ours and we just wondered if you'd like to maybe come with us to fulfill the quest and if you have had enough you know as far as i'm concerned you turn back if you wish but uh, just wondering whether you would like to join we don't know where it'll take us it's going to be one big adventure yeah it's probably going to get ugly at times as well i mean we've not exactly had plane sailing and we've barely started yet she she kind of looks at all of you and she takes a deep breath and she goes, "Well, um, I can't really deny that I do I do want 
a fun, fun life uh, inside of the, the church, and I have no more obligations. Um, Why don't you think about it? Yes, no, we've no. got we've got other things to do here yes, in Janna first. You know, you know, Why don't you think about it? There's no no real pressure. Give yourself uh, well at least a day or, or or two. We got we got things that we need to do. Yes, yes, I. You know what? I, I will. I will give, give it some thought. I can't imagine what you would want this old bag of bones for, but. You know, that Ogva comes through the door with like. Not a tea tray. Not a tea tray, just like arms full of stuff off the top, off the uh, table. Um, he's managed to eat any leftovers he's found. You've got a face full of. And if the very least, you could teach us how to cook a bit better, because um, all we've had so far is. Bits of rabbit and with some funny chive that uh, Kewin managed to find. Oh, you mean the grass? Is that what it was? It was grass, mate. Oh. Yeah, well, 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 I'm, I'm pretty sure. Sorry, Kewin. I'm pretty sure it'll be better. Well, don't, uh, you know, uh, uh, don't forget the deer. I suppose we didn't see the big deer, but we did find the fawn. I suppose the grass was useful as, well, dental floss. She smiles at all of you and she starts unloading your arms of, you know, your plates and stuff you can. I haven't finished with that yet. <laughs> oh, okay, dear. <laughs> she hands it back. Just like nibbling the last little bit of chicken off a chicken leg. Sucking <laughs> the marrow out of the bones. And <laughs> she, she goes, well, she, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you have thought of, you know, an old woman. But um, I think I will have to take a little bit of time to think about it. Um, perhaps before you leave, you will come back and see me anyway. Yes. Yeah, of course. We, I mean, we've got to. We're going to obviously go and do other things, and we'll. Find you're you're, you're more than welcome to, you know, continue resting up here. I, I mean, I've got plenty of room. Well, we don't want to overstay our welcome. You know, we really appreciate the fact that you took us in. We were actually looking for an inn at the point where we were, we were sent up here. To be fair, the locals were shouting us and just told us to run up here. Yes, well, they're, they're quite right. Did well, want to get caught and then nibble gassed. Thank you. I don't want to overstay a welcome, but that, no, that any, would anything be you need appreciated, especially. Uh, no, I, sh- I shall have a think of your proposal. Okay, if that is all right. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. Okay, it's absolutely fine. It's yeah, you know. Okay, so are we heading out now? Oh, I yes. think we can head out. Think, yeah. so, you know, it was going to be about two-ish by now, so we've got the afternoon. Yeah, we're going yeah. to go and we we could check out Con. Well, we yeah, we could get off and we could check out Contract Vela. Um, yes. And then there's the uh, the black market, the underground black market. We, we could, like the underground arena, we could have a look at that. Um, and, uh, yeah. But there is something that I need to do before I go. So I'm just going to wander off. I'm just going to go sit on stairs for a couple of minutes and just, just give me a couple of minutes, will you? Okay, and... Uh... Okay, Laura. I will see you outside, and I will then turn to turn to Esther. And uh, uh, thank you very much for the hospitality and kindness you've shown us, um, taking us in last night in the dreadful weather. And also, thank you for um, the assistance down in the catacombs. Um, we will try our utmost to see you before we leave. But uh, once again, thank you very much. It's my pleasure, dearie. Yes, thank you. Uh, that's I, I nod and. Um, go down the stairs and wait outside for Laura. Okay. I am going to go outside the door and I'm going to go part way down the stairs and I'm going to sit on the stairs with, you know, obviously my knees bent, so I'm sat on yep. one stair and my, my, my feet are sort of two steps down kind of thing. So my, my yeah, yeah. Right angles. I'm going to reach inside my cloak and give Rowan a bit of a shake on his... Hanger. <coughs> right. I'm pulling him out and I'm going to let him hang off my index finger, but I am going to put my thumb over his feet. <laughs> <laughs> because Rowan and I, well, I am about to have a bit of a parental discussion with him. <laughs> okay. I've been waiting to have the conversation at the appropriate moment. At this point, I'm holding Rowan upside down and I'm holding him in front of my face so that I'm at eye level with him. Now, he's very cute. He's very sweet looking. He's he's a he's about 12 months old. He's a lesser short-nosed fruit bat. Um, so 
it's not very big, it's not one of the giant bat varieties, obviously it's quite small. Um, you know, the, he's, he's reddish brown in colour and the edges of his ears and his wing bones are white. Um, he's got two pairs of lower incisors. Um, he's got large circular brown eyes with large black pupils and obviously as I'm holding him up, he's staring directly back at me. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be saying to him, Rowan, I need to have a talk to you. I am very disappointed in your behaviour. I'm disappointed in your behaviour last night. It's just unacceptable. You've been with me since a baby, right? You're now 12 months old and I understand that you're feeling your wings a bit. But you need to make yourself understand that, you know, trust and respect are earned and not given. I need to know that I can trust you. When you're growing up, you're living under my cloak. And you're under my cloak, you're under my rules. No, I don't want to hear any of your old guano. Okay, I'm not putting up with that. No, don't want to hear. You understand what I'm saying. Nobody likes a playground bully. People don't like others throwing their weight around. And while we're on the subject of weight, I've noticed that you're expanding rather a lot. Now, I know you've got a sweet tooth, but I think you're falling into one too many pots of mead because you're going a bit large around the belly. You're turning into Rowan Fatkinson. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, I know, you're a growing lad, I understand that. But, you know, the evidence is there because your hangar is getting stretched. So I'm now going to have to find something in town that I can sort out to get you a little bit, well, something a bit more stronger to perch on, I think. <laughs> Rowan, you're my furry friend and I like you, yeah? But... <sighs> You, you just you just need to know I know you need to put up with you you know look after yourself I know you need to you know there are times when you do and times when you don't you need to understand the difference am I making myself clear <coughs> yeah right well I'll give him a bit of a bit of cut up fruit and then I'm gonna pop him back in give him a tickle on the tickle on the tummy and I'm just <clears throat> gonna pop him back inside my cloak yeah. Um, then I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to continue down the stairs. Mate. Okay. So, <coughs> you joining me outside? So, on my way out, I wave to uh, Robert and Callie and say, I'm going out for a bit. Uh, we'll, we'll see you before we go. Ah, okay. Uh, I'm going to catch up with Ogvar, give him a tap on the shoulder and say, I'm, I'm with you. Sorry about that. Okay. It's something I had to do. Okay, where are you at, Colin? Yeah, uh, uh. Yeah, everything all right there, all right. Uh, you sorted what you're going to need to do? Yeah, I just... Uh, I just needed to have a bit of a parental discussion, you know? OK. Uh, well, Some that's... things just can't be left. You need to deal with stuff, you know? Yeah, it's that's not always a... pleasant, but there you go. I suppose, but... Uh, you know, as long as you're... You're, you're, you're OK now, I, I suppose we'd better go and... Uh... Yeah, we're all good. Thanks, Kieran. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I, I was just thinking that maybe we should go and... Uh... Have a look for a few bits and pieces, you know, the old uh, blacksmith and yeah, spell components. I think I'm going to need to go and see someone because well, Rowan's got this hanger inside my cloak. I'll pull my cloak open so they can see. It's just it's just like a cord. Uh, well, he's been on that cord since he was a baby and, well, um, he's getting a bit weighty and he's getting a bit stretched. So uh, I think I need to somehow... I'm a bit concerned about falling over and squashing him, you know. I need to find... I need to do something to, to give him something a bit more protective inside my cloak. Anybody got any ideas? Oh. What can I what can I do to have something constructed? I mean, do I do I get him a pocket? Uh, but it needs to be something it's need to strong, be... like you know, to well, give him a little bit of protection. Well, he's uh, if he's you know putting on a bit of weight, you know, it needs to be fairly fairly strong. Well, I don't know whether it's the mead, you know, or whether to be fair, he is growing. Well, it, well, yes, I mean, he's only a young thing, so, but uh, also, you know, as he he hasn't had much chance to do an awful lot of flying, so exercise, you know, he's, he's not really had much chance to do that, so he no, hasn't been able to work it off. Well, I've had to keep him under wraps quite a few nights, haven't we, with weather's not been great. You can't send him out in storm, can you? Maybe, I wouldn't maybe, do that. Maybe a sort of like a, a, a hard 
it, you know, uh, I haven't seen, uh, you know, how big, but maybe a small little, uh, like, stiff back backpack type thing that just attaches that you can put him in. Or... I was thinking about some kind of sort of sort of tough leather side pouch or something because if I fall over, I'm going to go face first or arse first, aren't I? Mm. Like less like less likely because to fall on my side. I mean. Hopefully. Yes, I agree. Um, something, something sturdy made of leather would be something most to, most preferable. I would say something to attach to my belt or something under the cloak. Yeah, what do you reckon? Possibly. Is there somewhere? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, let's 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 go and see if we can find a, a, a saddler's or something. You yeah, know? yeah, Somebody that who does leather good. work. Yeah. Well, sure, I'm very good already. I I think I may need to um, pay them a visit as well. Right. Okay. Well, if we go down that way and we just, what do you need, Kieran? Well, I was just gonna. Uh, Definitely get rid of uh, this uh, weaponry from the uh, old uh, uh, monsters we fought in the uh, uh, the actual church. You know, we've got uh, a few bits to get rid of, and I'm going to want to sell my get rid of my sword and the uh, shield. Now I've got this, I don't want to be carrying too much around because I've got all the weight. So, um, and maybe get a few rid of the a few of the bits and pieces. So. Um... We need to find a leather workers, the smithies, and yeah. whatnot. As you say that, Kieran, you hear it, Oi! Oi! You can put stuff in me! I'm not just some decoration fanny pack! I'm going to look down and go, I think that was an offer, Kieran, for anything you do want to store. Oh, I mean, so there's certain certain bits and pieces, you know, but I mean, like, I mean, are we going to really use the uh, the whip dagger? And... Well, I can't use it. No, it's not really my time. The same as the... Uh, the, the, the finger blades. You yeah. know, there's certain things that we we might as well sell and split. Yeah, I've got no problem with that. No, 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 no problem at all. Well, if you don't want to carry them, lob them in. You can get them back out. Okay. I think that's a, a very reasonable offer there. Jordan, and as he says that, his, uh, his, his little flap which goes over the top just kind of opens and flaps about a bit. He's quite the character, isn't he? No, yes, yes, I agree. I guess we'll have to make him part of the team then. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think that may have already... Uh, May have already occurred to us all. He, uh, he very much uh, made him his presence known. I hope so. You don't see many talking bags. <sighs> well, that I can't deny. Okay, so what are you doing? What are you putting in the bag, Kieran? I'm, I'm going to suggest that... Kieran, why don't you go and offload the stuff that we don't need? Get the best price for it you can. And, Ogva, you want to go to a leather workers? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, uh, we, we'll go... You and I can go to the leather workers. Okay. Right, so yep, that's so what we're going to do. I'll give you a bit of time to do that. Yeah. I'll go sort out Elora and Ogla first. Right, so we walk down the street and... Okay, yes, yeah, so you walk down and where are you going? Looking for anything with either... Right, so you'll be wanting to go towards a more industrial area, yes. yeah? Yes, industrial yeah. area. Okay. Yeah. So you say your goodbyes to Kieran. Are you leaving... Um, Orland with him? I'll leave Orland with Kieran. Okay. Okay, so you've got hold of Orland... And, okay, so the pair of you go off towards the industrial district. Excellent. And there are loads and loads of leather workers to choose from. Well, I guess we just pick the first one we get to. Is there one that does... Um... If you remember how I said the city was structured, the ones which are at the front, so closest to Northern Gate, they're more expensive and then going back, they get cheaper and cheaper. So it depends on when well, you I like want. It. I want a decent, yeah. a really decent, well-made pouch. So I almost do with like someone who does saddles. Be like, like saddle bag would be. Yeah, I think some, fair, yeah. somebody. Yeah, I think it's probably going to have to be like a decent quality, like a master saddlers or something yeah. to have. Yeah. Okay. So you take a look around and you weigh up your options of leather workers. There's quite a few of them, but in the end, you decide on Leonard's leatherware. Right. You're not sure what to expect from in, inside now. Right. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I walk in. Is it you just push the door open? It's it's an open it's front. Open. You, right. You've got like a, a stables kind of. There's a couple of horses round stabled up in the open, under a cover round the side, which are being fitted up. There's a couple of young apprentices who are there measuring up the horses. There you can see people making saddles. Um, you know, making the the base of the saddles and padding them out and making leatherwork saddles. And it's an open shop front. The doors are flown out, flung open wide. When you get in there, it's uh, well the outside of the house itself or this building. It's kind of like yellow, 
yellow plaster work with black beams exposed and it's got this kind of overhang so the top floor overhangs the bottom floor then with struts up, up the front of it and like a mezzanine yeah well, kind of but like the rest of the house is above it um is it actually a, a shop interior or is it like a stable it's it's uh, a shop kind of it's a bit a bit of a mix of both you've got obviously the horses sat um stables to the stabled side up of. onto the side of it and tied up at the side of the building mm. and inside it's it's there's numerous doors leading outside from the inside you can see where you know there's vats out back in in the yard you can see right through there's tanning vats and racks and you know leather hanging out to dry it's you know there's bits everywhere and it smells strongly of like leather and tanning and it, it doesn't smell particularly pleasant but you've it's a mixture of like smells of like n- new leather and kind of like the, the materials they use to make the raw leather right, yeah. um can i just look at some of the uh, leatherware that's hanging up make sure yeah. it's uh, what sort of quality is it looking? Is it looking? Yeah, you look at some of the leatherware and you can see, you know, there's kind of like the bits on the side. I mean, this is usually stuff you can tell which is made custom to order. There's not really much which is pre made. Okay, yeah. Uh, but you can see like some long leather duster coats which look really nicely made. You can see there's a pair of blacksmith chaps and they are. They look like a pre-used pair, which they may be reselling, but they're still very st- sturdy, strong quality. They've got tight stitching, they've got tight little brass buttons on them. You know, they look really good quality. When you feel it, it's soft and it's supple leather, okay. but it's durable. Okay, so I'll just look to Laura and say, oh, I think we may be in the right place here. This uh, looks excellent quality. Fine, that's great. I'll, I'll go and see what I can get. So, I approach, I don't know call out or is it a counter or yeah i should i should sit there looking around looking at you know bits on the side i mean there's stirrups stirrup straps reins bridlery there's all sorts all over the place and as you're kind of looking around and you're feeling the quality of these cha- of these chaps you hear some footsteps come up behind you and as you turn around to look there is an absolutely massive man he looks part bear to be honest man mountain yeah, he's he's big, he is round, he's got a big beer belly, he's got this long leather apron over his over his shoulders and hanging down and he's got bits of tools and thread hanging out of all of his pockets and on these on this apron and he's got this dirty kind of discoloured yellow shirt rolled up to his elbows. And when you look at his hands, he's got these big shovel hands and they don't look like they're for fine stitching work. You can imagine he probably doesn't do that. But he's got big hands and they're scarred where you can see like he's slipped or cutting the leather and he's cut himself. You know, he's got big hands and hairy forearms. And when you look up to his face, he's got round, rosy, red cheeks. And he's got hair which is sticking up in every single direction and a beard which looks like several birds have been nesting in it. He doesn't <laughs> smell per se, but then it's difficult to smell anything <laughs> with this like scent of leather round. But, you know, he stands there and he goes, Right, right, ladies, right, chap, how you doing? Oh. Hello there, um, would you be by any chance the proprietor? Yep, I'm Leonard, the one and only. Well, not the one and only, there's lots of Leonard's in you now, but that's me. Ah, good, good, good to meet you. Um, me and my friend here, we're, we're both after um, your expertise. Um, something you may not have possibly had the uh, opportunity to uh, craft before. Ooh, a challenge. I like that. Bring it on. So I will then. Nod and gesture towards Allura. Well, mine might be a bit simpler than his. However, I would like a, a pouch made for the side to go on my belt. So it needs like a loop to, for my belt to go through it. Um, I need it to be probably about, I don't know, eight inches by eight inches, something like that. Okay. Um, you know, just, but it needs to be really sturdy sides. So really stitched well, a thick, a thick, heavy leather something that's going to give a bit of protection so whatever you put inside it isn't going to get easily damaged right okay what's going inside of it i open my cloak and pull rowan off his thing and go my friend this is rowan he he... turn kind of spin him round so that (laughs) he can see rowan's really cute face and hold him up right he leans down eye level and he goes boop and pokes rowan's belly he goes ah cute thing right let's see what we can do and he pulls out of one of his many pockets. I'm going to now at this point put Rowan down and put him back and then give him a tick and say, sorry, Rowan, but I'm trying to get you some new accommodation. <laughs> he, he, he pulls out one of his many pockets, a bit of scrap of paper and some, uh, some charcoal. 
and he gets straight to work sketching and he turns around this design and he shows you what it is and basically what it is it's a slightly bent to your kind of like molded to your body shape kind of piece of hard leather with a kind of almost like a balloon and there's a couple of breathing holes in it and it's got a lid and he's even drawn a little perch inside of it for Rowan which would be made out of metal. Cool. Is that all right? That looks like it would be perfect. How much? Wonderful. Um, when do you need it for? Well, as soon as you can do it. I mean, you tell me how long it's going to take because I kind of really need one. Well, uh, hmm, say a day. Probably take a day to get that sorted. Yeah, that's not a problem for me. Okay, well, we're looking at the cost for that would be custom piece, it's a bit big, 50 gold. Don't suppose you could do it for 30, could you? It's flying a bit close to the wind for me, that one. Uh, my friend really does need some better. I mean, look at his accommodation. I'll open, open my cloak again. No, no. Yeah. I took that cloak off. You got the other cloak, haven't you? I'm assuming it's a removable removable perch. Okay, so I'll say it's a removable perch. Okay, let's say... Otherwise I'm... you've left them open. <laughs> well, I just well, suddenly, th- I just suddenly thought that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll go with it. I'll have to be more careful. Okay, so open the cloak and... I'll show him the perch that's been moved from my old cloak to this cloak. I did remove the perch. Um, and Rowan's just hanging there, and I'll just say, well, look, you know, this isn't... It's stretching. He's a growing boy. I just want to really protect him, you know. I don't want him getting squashed. Uh, Robbie, is it persuasion? Yeah, I'll roll persuasion. Roll persuasion. persuasion. Is it persuasion? Mm. No, it's no. not. That's far away. Diplomacy? Yeah, diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy. Roll me diplomacy check. Hang on, I also need to check that because I've got... Keep checking them out, we'll get the right one of them to do. Diplomacy. Um, okay. That's a 16 all in. He goes, mmm, mm. And he looks at the bat again, and the bat gives him the, the kind of big, big round eyes, and he goes, tell you what, let me pet the bat again, I'll do it for 30. Feel free. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> open me cloak. <laughs> oh my god! And I was gonna say you can pet all you like, but no, <laughs> I've decided I'm gonna rephrase that and, <laughs> and just actually I'm gonna I'm gonna take Rowan off his hook and just say there you go, and I'm just gonna hand Rowan over to him so he can play with Rowan. For he me. takes Rowan extremely gently for someone with such big hands. And, you know, he kind of cradles Rowan and he's very gently tickling his tummy and he's poking at his wings and, you know, he's just very gently having a bit of a pet and a scratch. And he plays with Rowan for about five minutes and then he hands him very gently back to him. He goes, dirty it is. Deal. And he holds his massive bear paw out. I appreciate that. And I'm going to put my hand in my pocket and I'm going to get the 30 gold coin in one hand. I'm going to shake his other hand and I'm going to pay him then and there. I'm going to pay him up front. And then I hold my hand out for Rowan. Yeah. He places Rowan very gently back in your hand and he takes the money and he shoves it into one of his pockets in his apron. And he goes, much appreciated. Come round sometime tomorrow afternoon. Should be done. I'll do that. Thank you, Leonard. That's really, really appreciated. No worries. Keep that. <laughs> Thanks. He's re- he is really sweet. So I'll hang Rowan back inside the plane. Okay. And... Right, and uh, send some opportunity now to... Uh, Leonard, another moment if you would. You may need some uh, advice on some leather care. Okay. We uh, are in possession of a um, a, an art, not an artifact, uh, an item. Okay. It's uh, very, very special to us, and uh, we would like to take a bit better care of it. It's a, it's a bag, but it's a bit uh, seen quite a few years, and we'd just like to just some dubbing or some waterproofing. We could maybe restore it a little bit. And what kind of state's in? Any holes? Any tears? I'm going to look at Alora for this because you have been wearing. <laughs> um, what well, I think. Orland. <laughs> Orland. Orland. You've been wearing Orland. Well, I think he's he's a bit battered. I think he's just he's really scratched and he's you know lost a bit of colour, hasn't he? Yeah, I think he's, he. Yeah. It. I, I don't think he's I don't think he's got any any holes and I don't think all his stitching's unraveling or anything. But it, I think he just needs a real good clean and waterproof. Yeah, thing. I think so. Okay, um, nourishing the leather. He scratches his head and you know. What colour is all? Uh, 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 is he a tan colour well, or is he dark he's, leather? Yeah, he's. Be a dark leather, won't it? It'd be warm, yeah. won't it? Uh, yeah. Tan or yeah, it would be darker leather. But he, he's not he's not a black bag, but he's a, he's kind of like a brown worn satchel. 
uh, yeah, maybe like kind a, of have a set, yeah. Maybe like a, uh, some kind of oil to feed the leather, you know, and then yes. some yes. top coat of some description to give him some protection. Leonard's nodding along and he's kind of scratching his head with his massive bear paw. And he kind of goes, hmm. And he wanders over to a shelf and he starts kind of like poking at things on the shelf and muttering to himself, whoa, that he's, one, whoa. He's a deep brown leather, you know. He's, he's, he's seen a lot of years, so he's very, very... You get, hmm, hmm. And he comes back with two items in his hand. And one item has a sticker on it. And he goes, he goes this one, Leonard's Leather Care Restorer. I, that should get a lot of scratches out. Give it a bit of a feed the leather, keep it supple, make sure it doesn't crack. He goes, and this one here. And he pulls out a little pot of what looks like a, a pot of cream, this type of cream. He goes, bag butter. Bag butter. Bag butter. Bag butter. Made by yours truly. Best thing for bags. Keeps them strong, keeps them soft, doesn't hurt the stitching, gives them a bit of extra shine, makes them look a bit nice. Oh, excellent. How, how much do I owe you for that, sir? Ah, oh, five gold all in. Just because the bat's cute. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, thank you very much. I was just going to smile. And, uh, so I, I pass him five gold pieces. Yep. He hands them over to you. He can literally hold both items in one hand. He just kind of <laughs> gives them towards you. And yeah. yeah and then uh, just sort of, uh, so yeah, I think he'll be happy to Laura. Yeah, Laura nods. She's in total agreement. She's saying, you know what, you know what, Ogvar, I, I think you're right. I think that's a good move. It had crossed my mind, but you beat me to it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. That concludes the business. In I think that concludes the yeah. business, yeah. He says, yep, come back tomorrow. Same time round about now. Should be done. Don't forget the bat. I like the bat. I won't forget the bat. Well, pleasure doing business. What time do you close? Yeah, when I fall asleep. All right, we'll come later. And then maybe you'll be a bit more awake and play with him. Oh! Right, we're going to tip me out to him and we'll leave the shop. He looks like he looks like a little fangirl. He's, you can see he's positively beaming. His face is... He's proper red, rosy cheeks. His eyes are scrunched shut. He's got this massive grin on his face. He's, he's one step short of starting to jump up and down in excitement. <laughs> we, we, we'll leave... Uh, we'll just wander back out onto the okay. street and just mingle and just look at what's up and down the street, I think. Yeah, sure. Okay, so it's probably about 2.30 now. You'd say it's, you know, a little bit later in the afternoon, but it's still really busy, crowds are bustling, all sorts. And with that, we'll go to Kewin. The lunch feast was a fine affair. Elora inquired about the history of the church, but any explanation for the strange earlier events eluded her. Rowan took a roasting for his rather rude and rough behaviour, and some life lessons were handed down. He was banished back into Elora's cloak, where he remained, pouting on his perch. Ogvar and Elora trundled into town to complete some personal errands and purchase some bag butter for Orland and a new roost for Rowan. Hi, Elora here. Although making this podcast is a total hoot, it still takes a mahoosive amount of effort and time to produce them. If you feel that you can spare a few coins to buy the crew an ale and some rations to keep the creative juices flowing and support what we do, although perhaps not Rowan as he's still looking a little on the chunky side just now, we would be eternally grateful. As a podcast supporter, we would give you a super duper shout out on the next episode for your amazing generosity. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, got to run. Looks like Rowan has got himself into a bit of mischief again. Thank you for listening to our podcast. Having you as a listener means everything to us. So, whichever streaming service you choose to listen to us with, please give us a like, subscribe and follow. We would love for you to join us on our Facebook or Twitter page, where you can catch up with all of our latest news. While you're waiting for the next episode of Secrets of the Silver City, why not pop over to our website, where you can read all of the information about this campaign, from backstories to setting. All of the links are in the bio of this episode. Join us again next week for the next instalment. Thank you for listening.